Quick disclaimer before we get started. I am not a financial advisor. The purpose of this video is to document my investing journey and to give you all some insight on what I like to do with my money. If you are in need of financial advice, I would recommend meeting with a financial advisor. Now that I've got that out of the way, I hope you enjoy the video. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of my monthly portfolio update. This month, I will be covering the changes made to my portfolio in August, as well as discuss a future goal now that I have turned 20. But before we get started, I would like to announce the start of my new channel, Thomas Ham. In the description, I have shared a link to my new channel, where these portfolio updates and other investing videos will now live. My gaming content will remain on Unlucky Gaming, but after this update, there will be no more investing videos uploaded to this channel. If you're watching this video on my new channel, and you're interested in following my investing journey, I would recommend subscribing and dropping a like to show your support. With that out of the way, let's move into the portfolio update. With summer coming to a close, I can honestly say I've learned some valuable lessons. Budgeting is something I need to take more seriously moving forward, and I say this because my contributions this month were significantly less than I would have liked. I plan to make a video on budgeting soon as a tool for me as well as you guys who are interested in taking control of your finances. Despite this, I was able to make two contributions to my portfolio. The first was Intel, where I bought $141.02 worth for 4.14 shares at an average cost of $34. And my second contribution was an investment in Verizon, worth $50 that brought my average cost to $48.18 and brought my total shares to 2.28 shares. For my dividends in August, I made a total of $23.04 with $3 coming from JP Morgan, $0.72 cents coming from Verizon, $1.17 coming from AT&T, $6.07 coming from National Health Investors, $0.53 cents coming from American Express, $0.36 cents coming from Apple, $1.28 coming from Stag Industrial, $1.39 coming from Realty Income, $4.23 coming from Starbucks, and $4.29 coming from QYLD. All of these dividends were reinvested, therefore contributing to the compounding process. If you've been following the stock market this year, you will know that it is on a nice trend downward. I'm currently down 17% from my high this year, and I I personally think it's going to keep going lower. I think it's going to keep going lower until mid-2023. That's my prediction so far. It'll depend on how aggressive we get with the interest rate increases. Speaking of which, on August 25th in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said that interest rates will keep increasing until inflation appears to be going down to their target percentage of 2%. I see this next year as a great opportunity to buy into the market if you've been resistant or hesitant to go in. If you are going to jump in and start investing now, it is likely in the short term your portfolio will dip into the red. And honestly, that's okay. As long as you keep consistently buying and reinvesting dividends, getting your average cost down while the share prices of everything are down, there's no real problem with that. I mean, you can get more shares for cheaper, have your dividends be able to get you more shares for just because the share price is lower. And then when the market recovers, you're able to realize a larger gain just because the share price is higher and you're able to accrue so many more shares under the lower share price. I'm personally going to keep buying. I'm going to keep buying, keep reinvesting dividends, and just keep increasing the equity in the companies that I own. I don't really want to expand my portfolio anymore. I think I own, <laughs> I own more companies than I think I want. I think I own around 33, I'm in between 30 and 35, and I kind of want to trim it down to like 25, but I don't think I'm going to until I'm out of college. But if you are interested in starting your own investing journey, I do have my link down in the description below. And if you do start your journey through my link, you are able to get a free stock when you create an account through Robinhood with my link. Before I wrap up the video, I want to jump over to my Excel spreadsheet. So far year to date, I have made $160 in dividends, with $23.36 already being confirmed for September. All time, I have made $245.25, but that is not the area that I really want to focus on. I want to focus on the area over here. 
This $24,071.40 is the total amount of money I've made in my working career. This is my crypto cost basis, this is my stock market cost ba basis, and this is it all put together. And then this percentage is the amount I've invested slash, like, divided by the amount I've made. So I've invested slash saved 53.68% of all the money I've ever made. You may be wondering about this crypto, and I, it'll be in a future video at some point, but I, that was a valuable lesson. I learned to not take investing advice from people who don't invest, but my main focus that I wanted to look at was my stock cost basis. As I shared at the beginning of the video, this month, or well in August, I turned 20. My goal for 20 was to have my portfolio hit $10,000. But now that I've get, hit that and I'm 20, I need goals for the future. So I decided I wanted to set a goal for 25 years old and 30 years old. Oh, I need to fix that. And I want to have a realistic goal and an overachieving goal. Now, you may be wondering what I would deem realistic and not realistic. Realistic for 25 and the career I want to go into, I want to hit a portfolio value of 100,000 by 25. And then overachieving. We'll say 250,000. And by 30, you know what? With a compounding process and consistently buying, I hope to have my portfolio hit 500,000. And I think my overachieving goal will be 1 million. Yes, these are tall goals. But the for the career I want to go into, I will be making a lot of money, but I also want to expand my portfolio in other ways, aside from just stocks. I am interested in real estate. I'm also interested in opening up a trucking business. But these are all thing these will all be things that will be documented as they become more feasible as I graduate college, get into my career, and all that. The reason for such a steep increase between 25 and 30 is mainly because of a quote that I heard from Charlie Munger where basically getting your first of something is always the hardest. So investing your first 10,000, investing your first thousand, investing your first hundred, investing your first hundred thousand, first five hundred thousand, like once you do it once, you already know how to do it, and you can keep doing it, and then you also allow your money to grow and compound. So, yeah, this may be a very steep goal. I'm literally timesing my money by five in five years, but I'm hoping <laughs> that's my goal, and I hope to achieve it, and I hope I get to document it as you guys get to see it. At 30 years old, it'll be 2032. So, we, we got a while to go, but I'm excited to share this with you. I'm hoping within the next five years, I'm this cost basis goes up a lot. I'm really hoping to get my savings percentage closer to 70%, because that is the version of the FIRE movement that I really fit into, which another video that I would like to make in the near future. But... With all that being said, and you the outro. To wrap things up, I will note again that I am not a financial advisor. If you're looking for advice on what to do with your money, I would highly recommend seeking out a financial advisor. That being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can show your enjoyment by dropping a like and subscribing. And if you're interested in my gaming content, check out my other channel, Unlucky Gaming. Thank you for watching, and have a great rest of your day. I'll see you next time.